means that people are seriously going to pursue that position. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be there. Right. Uh, but, but we also expect that uh, there will be similar, you know, high, high levels of competition for the prime minister position in the last years. Right. Yeah. Now, with these uh, positions that are coming up, uh, ideally from our leaders who have been there for a very long time, do you think a common youth is into picture? I don't know what you mean by a common youth. Uh, perhaps you should because, elaborate. Uh, we see the older people are always there. So will the youths go for this? Because I remember even, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the position like for MCS, which is vied mostly by the youths, was said to be scrapped off. Now, do you think with the prime minister and the deputy and every other thing that will come along, do you think uh, the youths will be engaged into this or they will leave it to the older? Uh, what has prevented the youth from buying in this country uh, has nothing to do with inadequacy of political states. Right. It has everything to do with structural problems, uh, you know, uh, favoritism within political parties, mm -hmm. uh, lack of resources. Uh, but even more importantly for this country, mm -hmm. it is a public that is uh, quite apathetic to the election of public affairs. Mm -hmm. So if you think you are going to appeal to young people, you realize they're not that very active within the political system. Right. Uh, so this, the problems are much broader, and if the problems are that systemic, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, if you're seeking youth representation, then this particular referendum will only bring uh, granular reforms. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, and in your own thinking or your own opinion, why do you think the youth are not involved in this political system, majorly? Th there are many factors, uh, there are many factors. One could cite the levels of education right. in this country. You know, people seem to imagine because we have very many universities, uh, a thousand graduates every year, mm -hmm. that is not a very significant chunk relative to the entire population, right? right? Mm -hmm. uh, the other problem is that people are unable to relate their daily problems, you know, with the problems in government. And the problems that we face are largely connected to government. Mm -hmm. So as it becomes more evident that the problems that we face mm -hmm. are connected to, you know, the government, then I think people are, go are going to have greater clamor for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, just last week, we saw the president uh, giving more powers to one and only uh, <laughs> CS Matiangi. Uh, he's now call called uh, Mr. Fixit because he's fixing like everything. Now, do you think this was a position of a premier in disguise? A premier in disguise? It might be. It might very well be to the extent that the powers that he seems to have uh, for intents and purposes, the powers of a prime minister. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see a person uh, bringing together, you know, essentially convening a meeting of cabinet, you know, and uh, a number of min uh, cabinet secretaries answering to the man, uh, then you might be tempted to think this is a prime minister. Right. Uh, so I think he's a prime minister who doesn't have the title, in <laughs> other words. <laughs> All right, now being the prefect of the other C, as all his colleagues are rather, uh, what, do you, what can you say about uh, Dr. Fred Matiani? I think he's going to do a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, those who are concerned about Matiangi's continued uh, presence in government, even after 2022, mm -hmm. uh, might say that this puts him on a collision course right. with the deputy president. Mm -hmm. uh, that might well be the case, especially for a person who might be interested in mm -hmm. uh, political office or being in public service after 2022. Uh, so that might present problems for him. I see how those problems might emerge there. Mm -hmm. But I think he's a very effective man. You look at all the ministries he has been, mm -hmm. his performance has been quite exemplary. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we have to give it to him, especially those of us that are concerned about the trajectory of uh, this country's political and economic affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, before, before we move on, you as a person or as a Kenyan, uh, do you think uh, it was a way of humiliating the DP? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. And I think those people... Because anyone would have expected the, the deputy president to be to added more power, not the CS. Uh, I think it, it only means that the president doesn't have much confidence in the deputy president, mm -hmm. uh, especially in executing those particular responsibilities. Right. And I see how, because it's quite evident that the deputy president is more concerned about the politics of 2022 Despite all his disguises, that is about development and what, what okay. uh, but that is just meant for the common man. But if you analyze it critically, it's just meant to advance his political course in 2022. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think the president sees this, mm -hmm. you know, and as he, he has realized, he cannot realize, you know, he cannot depend mm -hmm. 
or realize his political his ambitions, mm -hmm. you know, uh, depending on, you know, uh, the deputy president. So I think he has to look for someone else. And who else you look at other than mm -hmm. Matiangi? All right. C could, could we hope for Matiangi getting a bigger position now, apart from the CS prefect or the premier that is? You know, Machadi Agaizo wrote a very nice column over the weekend mm -hmm. in which he said that this man is just but a political gadfly uh, for DP Ruto. Mm -hmm. Matiangi has no political clout. Mm -hmm. You know, people overestimate him even in Kisi. He has not tested the waters politically. Right. So he might have the powers, you know, that comes with uh, uh, being a public official, but in terms of being a politician, mm -hmm. the man is not tested. Right. Uh, right? And I think we need to bear this, put this into consideration. And therefore, I think he, uh, if he's in good terms with the DP, then he might continue to be in government. Right. But in terms of a political position, I don't see him uh, pursuing that, but, uh, that uh, a political position. Now, uh, let's talk about his performance for the last three events that have happened. Uh, let's begin with the Matatu industry. He's not in the Matatu industry, but he affected uh, the formerly uh, Michuki laws, and uh, we saw how, how the whole nation all the Kenyans in the Matatu industry obeyed to the rules. Now, do you think we need someone like that in leadership, speak of the presidency, who has some sort of dictatorship? Well, dictatorship is a huge word to use. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge word to use. Okay, yeah. uh, but you require a person who is firm, you know, and a person who, a mature kind of person, a person who says we are going to do this and pursue it. Uh, there are concerns much earlier, you remember with uh, some of the decisions Matiangi had made, whether he was, you know, sticking to the precincts right. of the constitution. Mm -hmm. I think those were genuine concerns, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the person who is there must try to remain effective within the confines of the constitution, right. uh, especially within the legal architecture in which this country is moving into, mm -hmm. I think that will be crucially important. All right. Yeah. Now we are running out of time, but then, uh, with these morals added to him, uh, do you think he will execute them effectively like he has been doing, especially now that we have a question of security? You know, that's an important question. You know, every man, no matter how effective, has 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. uh, they can only do too much, right? Uh, so I think he, we are yet to say. I don't want to engage in too much speculation on that one, right. but we are yet to say there's a possibility that it might be stretched, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but I'm aware of one or two things within the Interior Ministry, and I know they have uh, a very wonderful team that is managing the entire sector, the inter internal security. Right. So it's possible that even if he dedicates attention to other areas, mm -hmm. that still his principal mandate mm -hmm. will be properly catered for. All right. Yeah. I, I want us to finish by answering this question. You may, might have answered it uh, earlier, yes. but then do you think stripping the presidency of its power will help to solve the problems we have as a nation of ethnicity? Well, let me, let me just elaborate this. The why we are stripping the president of powers mm -hmm. is not just addressing the question of ethnicity, as some have thought. Mm -hmm. It's because historically the president, has, the president has played a very pernicious role you know, in what we call horizontal emasculation, usurpation of power, right. completely emasculate in other institutions of governance. I think that is the principal reason why people should seek to spread this power. Mm -hmm. uh, the other issue is, of course, now they're spreading power to different offices, right? I don't think, quite sincerely, stripping the president of powers mm -hmm. is going to resolve the problem. Uh, there are those who had argued that the president, why the president was sort of exacerbating the ethnic problems in this country is because he was allocating resources to particular parts of the country. And I think that was partly resolved by the developed system. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know those who argue the president is going to resolve this problem of ethnicity, mm -hmm. how the, the, the president is going to do it, mm -hmm. despite him being ceremony and whatnot. So I don't think, in other words, I don't think he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. I think we better depend on other mechanisms, uh, like ensuring greater interaction in this country through uh, growing the economy, ensuring people are moving to different parts of the country, right. which I think are the core of the ethnic problems that this country faces. 
All right, many thanks for coming and uh, sharing your sentiments. We appreciate your presence here. Many thanks for, uh, for keeping us company. Coming up next is Y Mashariki, and they have a new DJ. It's called DJ Notna, so uh, keep it Y254 still to enjoy what is coming up next. He has been my guest, uh, Loyford Mutuma. He's the chair of the Global Strategy Group, and my name is Dereva Hillary. See you on a Friday. Have a good night.